What makes a successful professional bass fisherman? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Thank you for taking the time for watching this. If you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button and that like button and become part of the team and the family. I really do appreciate it. To start, I'm giving going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you are a proficient in all styles of fishing. You're above average. You're good at for the forward-facing sonar. You're good at drop shotting. You're good at finesse fishing. You're good at power fishing. And you're an above average angler and way better than us weekend warriors. You cast like a machine, you are accurate and deadly, and you put that bait exactly where you want it. You're open-minded, you're willing to learn, you're open to constructive criticism, and lastly, you're confident in your skills and you're mentally and financially prepared for the ups and the drastic downs that are about to incur. So congrats, you're a professional bass fishing tournament angler. I'm going to tell you some of the things that I've learned over the last 15 years, when I did the radio show, and when I've done this content career as a content creator and as a YouTuber. These are things that I think most people think that they're ready for, but they just aren't. And I'm going to give you some tips on how I think you should proceed if you want to be a professional angler. We're going to jump straight in and talk about sponsorships because this is one of the main topics that people like to talk about or ask about. How do I get a sponsor? How do I make sure that I have that income coming in at all times to help me not only pay for what I'm going to do or go out go out there and do, but also make sure that I have money coming in constantly in case that I don't win or do well on out there fishing. You need to know, top to bottom, period, end of story right here. The sponsors need to pay for everything that you're doing. You need to have sponsorships that pay for your entry fees, that pay for your gas, that pay for your lodging, and pay for your food. They also need to make sure that they're paying for you for outside stuff that you're doing. I see sponsorships in a new light since starting doing YouTube. And while I think YouTube is a nightmare, I think social media and YouTube is a definite must that all professional anglers must do. But honestly, I don't think they do enough. There are a few guys that are out there that are doing everything that they say. And I'm just giving you knowledge that I know firsthand. There are too many people that are out there that are just have their hands out asking for free stuff, asking for that monthly check to come in. But in their contract, they need to do X amount of things to live up to their the, the needs of their sponsor. And there's way too many anglers that don't do it. As much as you might want not want to be in front of a camera, just like me, it's uncomfortable for me to be in front of a camera. I'm not extroverted at all. I know that sounds weird. If you meet me, I'm nice and whatever it is, but I'm not in, I'm very introverted, very introverted. This bothers me. But if you're going to become a professional angler, this needs to be where you live. You need to be able to get on YouTube and social media sites and explain the products that you're using. It's one thing to go out there and use the products, which you must do all the time. As soon as you're outside, walking outside, you need to be promoting that sponsor at all times. You need to use their lures. You need to be the brand for them and you need to brand yourself. You need to brand yourself by doing social media posts, by doing YouTube videos, by doing all of the little things that help the sponsor grow because if they, you're helping them grow, they're going to in turn continue to sponsor you. Now I say this with out throwing shade. I said it a little bit. There are too many professional anglers that don't do this. So don't fall into the stuff that everyone else is do. Don't take it for granted that someone's giving you X amount of money monthly and you're just collecting that check. That's the thing you need to do. You need to work for your sponsors. You need to be part of their marketing plan because they budget a certain amount of money out of every product that they sell to marketing. And you're taking that away from them from doing other things by going and doing maybe folks, uh, Facebook boosted posts or Instagram boosted posts that sell product. You need to be able to sell their product. And while there's a lot of anglers that do promote their sponsors and their brand and everything else, there's a lot of them that don't. And when I say they just sit there and collect a check, don't use the products, they are hurting the whole industry. So you own a company and you're you have X amount of money to spend and you wanna you see the benefits of what is happening in this industry. We've just come out of COVID and we had we're on a super high and all the products have went up in value. At the same time, the products are harder to get in because they have COVID and stuff on the over there. And there's less and less manufacturers creating that product. And we're just gonna use lures as an example because I know this 
particularly well. Some anglers get there, sign a contract and say, I'm going to do X amount of posts every month, and I'm going to do this amount of videos, and I'm going to do this and this. And they start getting those checks in, and they go fishing, and they get busy because the tournament schedule is happening, but they don't do those posts. They might tag you in the post, but they're not doing anything to help promote that lure company. But that lure company still needs to pay you, and you're expecting that money to come in because it's what you need. But you're not living up to your contracts that you have in place. And when that happens and you don't do what you're doing, if somebody else who might be better at it than you comes and talks to these people, they remember the bad person. I know this firsthand. This I know of an angler that got, let's just say, $750 every month from a lure company. Every month they were going to do one or two posts talk about the, the the product talk about the lures show the lures in 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 the water and catching fish after 12 months they had done two posts now the company should have been on top of them to do better i definitely am not giving all the fault to that angler but there's way too many anglers that are doing that exact thing you might think you're out there promoting their product by saying their name on a stage but really, unless you're doing something to help them sell the lure, you're not helping their brand. And the truth of the matter is, unless you're winning, you're really not helping promote that brand. Just because you use a lure and catch a couple big fish in a fishing tournament and you've done well with it and you're not in the top 10 or you're not winning, you're not helping sell a lure or helping sell the brand. So when you become a professional bass angler, the major thing you need to do is promote the sponsors and the brand and promote yourself. Get out there and start doing more social media stuff. Start doing YouTube videos. Have fun. Create an entity that surrounds you. Make sure that the people around you are also good people. That's the other thing. Because there's too many people that are always wanting to get a little, get their hands out and get that and get something from you. Don't have all yes people around you. Have someone to be able to say, I don't know if that's a good idea. Becoming a professional angler is not an easy thing. It really isn't. And really, the truth is, is that if you cash a check, that's just an added bonus to your overall income. But you need to be out there promoting the brand, your brand, and your sponsors more than anything. And if you're not, you're not doing it well. And you're not going to have sponsors. It's great that you know how to fish all areas and do well down here and up north. That's great because there are not a lot of anglers that can do the spectrum of fishing that happens throughout the country. You're either good at one thing or you're good at another thing, but you tend to have your favorites. You either can fish shallow water, you're good forward facing sonar, or you're good power fishing or finesse fishing, whatever it is. You're good at a few things, but not great at everything. And you need to be able to help promote those brands and sponsors that are paying you for that. I was told a long time ago, there's three types of professional fishing. I heard this from Lefty Cray, the godfather of fly fishing and one of my heroes. He said, the first type of of sponsorship is the guys who go out there and just get a discount to promote that sponsor. And really, when you have a sponsor, you're a promotional person for that sponsor. The second type is the people who get the products for free. And then the third type is the guys who are getting paid to promote those products. So which one are you? Just because you have patches all over your body doesn't mean that those guys are really behind you. Start to promote yourself as a brand, as an entity, and make yourself worth more. Because the bigger the crowd that's following you are, or is, is the bigger you're going to get paid. I don't know if I've went through the whole circle of what makes a successful bass fishing professional angler, but in this video I just wanted to talk about new anglers that are looking to get sponsors. If you really want to know, getting sponsors is a really tough thing to do. A lot of sponsors have had bad people beforehand, and you're going in there with a different view. You need to be able to show them how you're going to make them better how you're going to promote their product to help them sell more product. Because they're just not giving out money. Since COVID happened and we have this increase of, of sales and everything else, and now products having a hard time getting in, there isn't as much money out there for marketing. So you need to look outside the industry to find sponsors. And you need to show them and tell them how you're going to help them become bigger and better. And when you do that, you need to say, this is the amount of thousands of people. And you're going to be charged X amount of dollars for this thousand, the people that are going to see it. 
if you have a big following on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, then that helps even more because then they'll be able to see that there is some substance to what you're doing. So I have always said, if you ever need my help, I'll give as much help as I, as I can. I have a lot of opinions about this because as a person who has a little bit of a, a small ownership of part of a company and then dealing with lots of lure manufacturers over the years and, and even motor companies and stuff like that. I know what it takes to get a sponsor, but I also know that it's even harder to keep a sponsor. It's really, really a tough market. And there's a lot of anglers trying to do the same thing that you are doing. And to make matters worse, it is a cutthroat industry. This is not the nicest industry there is. Everyone is out for that same marketing money or same marketing budget throughout the industry. As much as you might not think your buddy's out there, that's talking crap about you, at some point in time he will because he's looking for to make more money for his family. And if you're not doing well in tournaments, it just even gets more cutthroat. I know for myself, I would have never, would never ever think about becoming a professional bass angler, but that's just me. As much as I'm unbelievably competitive and want to win at everything that I do, even when I go fishing with friends and stuff, I do know that when I, you put money into or you have money that has to back what you're doing, things become really tough. Not to mention, I don't want fishing to not be fun for me. I want it to be fun when I go fishing with my little boy or I go fishing with friends. I want to have fun when I'm out there fishing. So I do have to tone down the competitiveness that I have. But I can understand if you want to become a professional fisherman and how that competition makes you a better or brings it out in you because I have the same, I have the same desires. But again, I don't want to do it and hurt what I really enjoy. Again, if you have questions, I'd love to hear them or answer questions. Or if you have a comment, comment below and tell me what you think it takes to make a successful bass, fish, bass fishing professional angler. So I hope you like this video. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I will talk to you very soon. Talk to you soon. Cheers.